Hello, everyone, and welcome to our evening session. I hope everyone has been looking very much forward to us coming together this evening and talking about how we can increase our sleep hygiene, specifically if that counting sheep really does help or if there's something better out there. For those of you that are new to the Demio platform, you can notice that we do have a chat box there. So feel free to introduce yourself. Let me know that you can hear me okay, that the video is working okay as well. And I will also be introducing you to two other elements. Oh, great, thanks, Krista. One is going to be the polls that we use so we can make it a little bit more interactive and I will also have a handout for you to follow as we go along. So as we have questions that come up, feel free to put them into the chat box. If I can answer them as we go along, I certainly will. And if we need to wait until the end to do a Q&A, then we can do that as well. So it's completely up to you. Hi, Roxanne. All right, that's amazing. Thanks so much for checking in. So this evening, we are going to be talking a little bit more about how we can improve and take some control over some elements of our sleep hygiene. My name is Sharon Ash. I'm a health promotion specialist with Strengthening the Forces at PSP Kingston. Oh, hi, Leslie. I hope you had a great walk. Hi, George. Wonderful to see you again. It is so great that we can come onto this platform and have an opportunity because as we know, we can't do these face-to-face -face, as we usually do in health promotion. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how health promotion is helping us now and also what we can do in order to get a little bit more accustomed to health promotion once we're back on our base and our wings. Hi, Terry ann So health promotion has four key pillars, and those are social wellness, addiction awareness and prevention, nutritional wellness, and injury prevention and active living. So you may wonder where sleep strategies fit in there. Hi, Cheryl. And sleep strategies actually fit in all these different pillars of health promotion. So in health promotion, we actually weave strategies for sleep hygiene throughout many of our courses. For example, we do know that there is an element around stress that's incorporated with our lack of sleep. We also recognize that in managing angry moments that if we don't get sleep, we're probably not our best self. And I'm sure that you have recognized that in yourself or maybe just in someone else before. The other thing that you may not recognize is the importance of sleep for nutrition, and our physical health, but also our mental fitness. And all of those different elements are why we're incorporating sleep into health and wellness. So our mission this evening is to provide some ideas around how you can have a more silent slumber. So how are we gonna get there? Well, this is our agenda for the evening. Now this is the second time for our webinars that I have done this programming around sleep strategies. And the only negative feedback that we had, hi Diane, is we didn't have enough time for relaxation. And so I'm just switching things up a little bit to give us some more relaxation time at the end and to look mostly at that sleep hygiene and what you can do as you're crawling into bed to really help the mind and the body to become at ease. But that's only one part of our sleep strategies that we look at. So we'll look at also how we can incorporate other elements of sleep because from the moment your eyes open in the morning, you're actually setting yourself up for quality and quantity of sleep. So it's an all day practice. So we'll look at some of those strategies, why sleep matters, and specifically we'll have a little bit more practice time and we'll have that Q&A. Again, either as we're going along, feel free to put it in the chat or you can stay at the end and ask as well. This is an hour long session that we're doing, so we will be wrapping up for 8.30. And then of course, I will be thanking you and adding some resources for you as well. Just before we do our first poll, I also want to be certain that you have an understanding of a few key elements. One, all of this material is the property of Department of National Defense, which means that for anything that we talk about this evening, it can't be replicated. It is being recorded, so I want you to be recognized that as well, so that if there's anything that you need to filter, feel free to do so. 
And also it's wonderful that we get to record these because you can view them again. So as I mentioned, I did do a little bit more sleep hygiene last week and there have been amazing webinars, which I will get to. And we do invite you to go as well to calfconnection.ca where the webinars are recorded and saved. And I will give you that link so that you can see all the amazing elements of what health promotion is offering to you during these challenging times when you probably need some uh, more quality sleep as well. So please understand about confidentiality. We definitely want you to take all the information and go forward with it and the application of that, but to recognize as well that if there's any specific stories that they stay uh, confidential. So who was out there? I've introduced myself and this is an opportunity for you to introduce yourself as well. So I'm going to pull up one of our first polls um, to identify who we have with the audience. So I split it into four. If you can just give the one that is most relevant to you right now, military or as a veteran, perhaps family of military, and if there's any staff as well. So we can see here, and I've opened it up for you to be able to see as well. It is so wonderful for us to be able to tweak our webinars and to recognize who we're getting mostly on these webinars so that the language and the information that we're providing can be beneficial to everyone. So it's wonderful to see that we are really reaching our military members, but that also includes the 1 million strong. So it's always great to see veterans family members and staff members as well. So remember that uh, part of the great aspect of what we're doing here with the webinars is that you can share them with your friends and family. This is where you can notice where they will be saved, which is at calfconnection.ca. So when you're looking at calfconnection.ca, you can see that there's national and there's also local. So you can follow your local health promotion, fitness staff, as well as recreation. Or you can see nationally that we have a variety of webinars and a variety of concert series and program schedules from recreation, as well as virtual fitness schedules as well. So please take this opportunity, even though it is a challenging time, to do something for yourself to get some information and to be able to apply it to yourself, but also share it with family and friends. So one of the handouts, well, the only handout that I have for you this evening, I'm going to bring that up as well. And this is a worksheet and I've also added resources into it. So you can hit the download button there. When you hit that, it will download and then you can save it to whichever file or if you happen to have an air printer, feel free to print it off as we go through it. And this is going to help you have a handout for looking at how those strategies can be implemented right away. As you know, or if you aren't aware, then it is challenging to make behavior changes. And part of behavior change is taking one thing that you really wanna change, hi Thomas, and take action on it. And then once it starts becoming ingrained and becomes where you're not really having to think about it too much anymore, that's your opportunity to try to add a new strategy. So tonight we're going to look at something that you want to increase or want to get better at, and also what are some steps to take in order to do that. So you can use this as a guideline as we go through with our handout. So with this handout, I'm also quite curious for another poll of, on average, how, do, how many hours of sleep do you get each night? So let's see where you fall as an individual and then how that can be recognized in Canadian statistics as well. So this is an average, I mean, some nights are certainly better than others. And perhaps before COVID-19, you were getting better quality sleep, of course, the more changes we have, the more challenging it is to really create those strategies that help us sleep in the evening. So just looking here, we have um, one person, nine to 11. Most people are in that seven to eight, 
A few people are under that at five to six hours or less than five hours. And what I really want people to register is that wherever you are, if you're less than five hours, not to give up on the practice of creating sleep hygiene or if you're in that five to six hours. Even in the seven to eight hours, we can still tweak things to make them a little bit better. So it's not necessarily to go from sleeping five hours to sleeping eight hours perfectly, but to recognize little things, even if it's extra 15 minutes of quality sleep. So thank you so much for answering that. And you can keep that in your mind, or if you've been able to print off your handout, or just think about this handout, then these are different elements of what we can look at for improving. But you may be curious of how you fit into general Canadian society. So this is a Canadian health measure survey from 2014 and 2015. On the left-hand side, you can see that the current recommendations are seven to nine hours for ages 18 to 64 and seven to eight hours ages 65 and above. So we can see that the majority of us were not in those recommendations. Again, it's without judgment and it's to look at your here now with that effort of taking a step further to help with that sleep hygiene and to slumber a little bit more silently. The other elements of this is certainly not just the hours of sleep that we have, but looking more specifically about sleep quality. I was quite astonished to see that one in two, or one out of two, 50% of adults in Canada have trouble going to sleep or staying asleep. So it was quite interesting to me to really think about when we're looking at the strategies and the techniques that really help us either fall asleep or stay asleep, we're doing some things within the military and health promotion really well. So it was great to see that this, the tools that we're using can really help folks with sleep quality as well, not just sleep quantity. The other elements around sleep quality, recognizing that one in five adults do not find their sleep refreshing. And even the next part of sleep quality, one in three adults have difficulty staying awake during waking hours. So you can see the impact that can have in safety situations. We recognize that as a society, we are not getting the quantity or the quality of sleep. And it makes sense because we really now within the past eight to 10 years are starting to see some of those quality sleep studies coming out so that in health promotion, as we look at science evidence-based programming, we are really able now to take some of those quality sleep studies happening in Canada and apply them within the military context, which is really great. For those of you that have or are in the military, you have probably, depending on how much time you've been in, have had a variety of different times in which you were not given the amount of sleep, quality of sleep, that we're needed in order to perform. And we're really looking now at how we can increase performance and therefore, of course, health and wellness, looking at increasing and tweaking our sleep hygiene. So it's great to see that those recommendations are starting to flow down into our physical workspace. So some of the quality sleep studies look at the fact that quality sleep has a direct effect on our mental and physical health, but not just our mental and physical health, but also our quality of life and safety. We can also see that it's crucial to healthy brain functioning, that in order for us to formulate new neural pathways and to prepare us for tomorrow, we need to process our day and sleep is what helps us to remember information from the day, to put it where we need it in those neural pathways in our brain and to be able to pull it up the next day. So there are a variety of behaviors that we start to notice when our sleep quality or sleep quantity starts to diminish. We can also see that sleep increases problem solving, creativity, attention to detail and our attention span and making decisions. And of course, all of those things are not just perfect within the context of the military, but in life in general. As we see that people who are sleep deficient are less productive, take longer to finish tasks, have a slower reaction time and make more mistakes. And so those are some key functions as to when within the military, they started to look specifically, so 
sorry, I'm just going to go back here, at two different strategies. So for the last couple of years, we have had the mission ready strategy looking specifically at sleep, activity, and nutrition in that performance triad. And that's through the Canadian Army Integrated Performance Strategy. It is absolutely amazing. It's a wonderful resource. There's so much interesting elements around sleep and sleep hygiene specific for the military and operations. And I invite you, if you're interested, uh, on the back of the handout that I gave you, your worksheet, there is that link as well. And more recently, we have the balance strategy. And the balance strategy is the Canadian Armed Forces physical fitness strategy, but it's not just about physical fitness. It's about mental fitness and emotional fitness, sleep and rest as well. And we have the same uh, quotation from both the performance triad as well as the balance strategy. Insufficient sleep impairs the brain's fundamental ability to function efficiently which cannot be overcome by motivation, in, initiative, sorry about that, willpower, or caffeine, which is what most of us reach for, right? So we have to look at when we have insufficient sleep, we have that uh, performance that starts to diminish. So George is saying caffeine, ugh. So we have to look at what can we do to improve that sleep hygiene and what do we have control over, not only for physical performance, but mental, emotional, psychological performance as well. This is a really great performance when we look at cognitive performance. Again, this is specifically within the military context, but it is applicable for everyone because what we really start to see that as sleep diminishes, our cognitive performance diminishes as well. And this recognizes that seven to eight hours of sleep, soldiers sustain operational performance for the entire waking day. So if we can get those soldiers seven to eight hours of quality and quantity of sleep, that their performance of course stayed on par in that green section. As we start to move down to the red, when soldiers get less than seven to eight hours of sleep, performance degrades over time, and less than 5% of soldiers can sustain performance on less than seven to eight hours of sleep per 24-hour cycle. So pretty phenomenal. And again, if you're really interested in the science and some more around the military context, then I will provide again those resources, but I want to bring it back to health promotion here. And you'll see that we utilize the mental health continuum model. And of course, you just saw the green, yellow, orange, and red that was also in the performance chart that I just showed you previously. And again, if you want more information around the mental health continuum model, then we certainly have mental fitness, suicide awareness, and mental fitness exercises that are already been recorded as webinars. And you can check back in on those to get more information where we actually go through this whole model. For this specifically around sleep hygiene, I really want us to look and give you some examples around behaviors that you could notice in yourself when your sleep changes. So the mental health continuum model is not a diagnostic tool. It's not to diagnose if you have a sleep disorder, but to recognize our normal sleeping patterns and how we can improve. So basically when we look from the green being healthy or the yellow being reacting, most of us are in that healthy or reacting. Most of us in the military and within the 1 million strong military support network as well. But there are people that of course are in that orange or red. And the goal here for this continuum is to notice what green looks like and to notice a change in behavior to recognize quickly so that we have a, a fast prevention or intervention when we slip into the yellow and our normal ways of adding healthy sleep patterns and sleep hygiene will really help us in that green and the yellow. If you notice as we're going through this, some of your own behaviors are more in the orange or the red. Health promotion is prevention based and we do not do any clinical uh, performance-based um, help and support. And so what I would 
absolutely suggest for those people is to reach out and I will give that SIF map number at the end as well so that you have some resources that can help and support you. When we start to look at this and we look at the green being healthy, we look at normal sleep patterns. So how does that look? I want you to think about your own normal sleep patterns and how you would feel when you wake up, when you feel as though you are refreshed, not those one in five Canadians that do not feel refreshed, and how your day looks, how your mental, physical, emotional wellness is. And as we start to slip over towards the, the right into reacting, you may see a little more trouble sleeping or maybe those rumination, those thoughts that keep coming up or you wake up in the middle of the night, you just can't get back to sleep. Maybe there's um, some nightmares that start to come in there as we get into the orange. We see more restless and disturbed sleep, the reoccurring nightmares. So not just one off or something has happened that our mind is processing or into the ill or the red there, you can't fall asleep or stay asleep and sleeping too much or too little. So again, none of these are standalone. What they really look at is that change of behavior. So again, I do invite you, if you are in the green and the yellow, to really use some of the strategies that we're going to talk about next or if you're finding yourself deeper into the yellow, orange, or red to find additional resources, including some that I'm going to provide to you at the end of our briefing tonight. So again, we're going back to the second part of the study that I was showing you earlier. So again, this is the Canadian Health Measures Survey from 2014, 2015, and it really does look at insufficient sleep in adults and where we can look at incorporating better sleep hygiene and what some of those elements are that we have control over. So at the very top, we see where other health promotion programs can really be helpful and supportive. So we can see that the more sedentary time we have, the more inadequate sleep that we're going to potentially see or insufficient sleep. So if we look at injury reduction strategies and having more active living protocols, those are things in health promotion and some of our field of knowledge that we can help and support you with. When we look at chronic stress, so recognizing the impact of chronic stress on poor, insufficient, or inadequate sleep, and that may be something where you look at taking stress take charge, or for right now, really looking at those webinars. And we do really incorporate as much knowledge-based and prevention-based programming in those webinars as possible. If you have some ideas as well of things that we can provide to you, please let us know because we're constantly looking at what we can give to members and their families and support units right now during this time when we can't be face-to-face. -face. And then of course, there's some good sleep hygiene tips that we're going to look at specifically next. So how do you currently prepare for sleep? It's quite interesting because we think back to our kids and what we do to provide them some sleep hygiene. So you think about what you do with your children. Maybe you start to have them slow down where they have a bath or they brush their teeth and comb their hair. So I've just put a poll up there to see if there's anything that you do for yourself. And um, I've had to change my hair in this one because my hair is now growing out. <laughs> so I changed my hair in the middle one, my little uh, emoji here. So how do you prepare for sleep? Are there things that you do? Have a cup of tea maybe? Uh, I put meditation in there, but any sort of relaxation that you do for yourself or deep breathing, visualization, all those that fall under meditation. And perhaps you do one or more of these. Um, but I just wanted to see, first of all, what people are doing or if they aren't doing any sort of preparation for sleep and also to get an idea of the other. So if, if folks don't mind, if you can put in the chat what those others could be or if there weren't things on there. So people are now integrating that CBD oil as well. So for some military uh, members and for other members within the community, they are trying to see what are the benefits and how it is helping people. What are other things that people are doing? 
As you can see for me, I like to have a cup of tea at night. I love to do some form of visualization, meditation, maybe some stretching. Some people like to do yoga at night as well. Maybe it's having a bubble bath. Um, yeah, taking that time just to go top of the head all the way down our body, maybe squeezing and releasing, doing some of that body scan. There's so many different things that we can do. It's just whether we are creating that routine. So routine is really one of the key elements of being able to practice and implement sleep hygiene. So in our handout, I just want you to reflect back a little bit about what you are doing currently well. And you don't need to share that, but I do want you to think of what is it that you currently do well to prepare yourself for sleep. And that's not just in you know, the half an hour, 45 minutes when you start to let your body calm down and prepare for sleep. We look at all different ways throughout the whole day that we can look at how we're going to set our up. So Cheryl has to fall asleep on the couch most of the time, make my way to bed when I wake up. I have a terrible time turning off my brain to fall asleep in bed. Yes. And so what we start to do, Cheryl, is just create that that starts to be part of your routine, falling asleep on the couch. So what you're doing right now with that couch is teaching it and teaching your body that when you lay down on the couch that it's time to get ready for sleep. So you're teaching it that part and that's great if that's what's working for you right now. If you want to increase that element of teaching your body to fall asleep in bed, it'll just take a few little tweaks which I can give you some help with. So let's take it a little bit further and see what the three steps are that you may feel comfortable integrating. So step one is looking at sleep habits. So sleep habits are what you do from the time your eyes open in the morning all day long. These are daily practices that promote good sleep. For step two, we have sleep hygiene. And sleep hygiene is about the hour before bed when we actually start to do these things that cue our body and our mind that it's time for relaxation. So we wanna go from stress throughout our day to a relaxation response. The thing that really tweaks our relaxation response the best is our breath. And so breathing is always a key element of any sleep hygiene that we do. And then the third step is looking at sleep habits. How do you create the environment that you're sleeping in? So that's the actual physical environment. So let's look at this a little bit more closely. Tonight, we are specifically going to spend more time in sleep hygiene as we practice, but I also want you to be aware of other tweaks in step one or step three that you may want to incorporate. Having that fixed bed and wake time, yes, even on the weekends. So if you are a 6 a.m. person Monday through Friday, you honestly should be a 6 a.m. person Saturday and Sunday. I hope that's not bursting anyone's bubble. But it's really important because again, we want to train our body to expect sleep. And the things that we do before we actually get into the room where our bed is are all the ways that we can train it. Avoiding daytime naps or limiting those naps to 20 to 30 minutes. So there is a lot of science um, in all different elements. Some science says don't nap. Some science says you can nap from 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, if we're looking at performance around sport performance and athletes, napping is really good. And they say to nap within be, between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. and up to 20 to 30 minutes. So again, these things, because we are different, our circadian rhythms are different, our melatonin levels are different, and the way that we structure our sleep is slightly different. You wanna take these ideas, but then try and see which works best for you. So if you have never napped before, but you're having difficulty sleeping, try a nap. You just don't wanna get into REM sleep, so that's why it's 20 to 30 minutes. Otherwise, that's what creates that groggy wake up time. Avoiding caffeine and alcohol, so at least four to six hours before sleep, but I know people that absolutely cannot have any caffeine after noon hour. And that, again, is something that they really need to know. 
Uh, Leslie saying, if I'm not for even 20 minutes, I can't sleep at all. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't, I don't enjoy napping. I'm not a good napper and I'm a good sleeper, but you want to try a variety of different things and see what works for you. So Leslie, that's great. George, yeah, the alcohol and caffeine. Now alcohol, right? Having one alcoholic drink can help people fall asleep, but is not obviously the best health strategy. And the downfall of that is that people wake up in the middle of the night, either because they have had more to drink and having it being a uh, diuretic, then they have to get up and use the bathroom. And so that keeps them out of their sleep or also looking at that element around alcohol is the negative impact it has as being a depressant. Also avoiding strenuous exercise at least two to four hours. So again, for some people, they may go to work out um, after dinner or go for a run after dinner. That may be the only time that they have in their in their day in order to do that. And so that's going to push your sleep further into the evening and again, change that up. So we don't always have control over every part of our sleep habits, our sleep hygiene, or our sleep habitat. So we really want to take um, the things that we do have control over and focus on those first, get comfortable with those first, tweak them first, and then move forward. So sleep hygiene, when we're looking at sleep hygiene, that's creating that routine. And I really hope that this is something that is going to be a practice for everyone during this time when we actually do have a little bit more control about what's happening in our own home. So we have more time right now, although we also have more worry. So it is, it is a bit of a catch-22, as Leslie was saying earlier. I'm just going back to Roxanne here. I need to get better at scheduling worry time during the day than doing it in bed. Yes, another thing that can help with that is having that journal beside your bed, Roxanne, so that things, instead of ruminating in our mind, we can let it out by journaling. Get it out of our mind so that it is stuck on that paper until morning time. So that is another little tidbit that can help. Having a light snack, so not eating too much where your belly's too full, but a light snack, specifically protein, can help to create that sensation of feeling comfort. And that's what George is saying. My father liked a glass of warm milk. That's exactly it. It gets into that aspect of comfort, calm, peace, relaxation. Also, you get into getting the milk, warming it up, pouring that in your favorite cup. All of these are rituals. And you really want to create that ritual of sleep. Practicing relaxation techniques. So we're going to do a little bit of eye rest this evening and have a, um, some time in which I'm going to guide you through. We're going to get into that in just a few minutes here so that we have a nice time frame of it and not just uh, the six or seven minutes that we had last session. And know your favorite sleeping position. So, of course, recognizing where you have the best quality of sleep. So maybe that is sleeping on your back, but then getting as much comfort into it as you can. For anyone that does restorative yoga, this is sort of that idea of getting your body very comfortable so that again, we are touching the relaxation response and telling our mind and our body that it is exhalation time. It's time for rest and digest. If you don't fall asleep within 30 minutes, get up and get out of bed, uh, but you don't want anything that has a blue light. So you don't want to watch a movie on TV, or if you have an iPad or an iPhone, um, actually all phones, I'm just saying that because that's what I have, they do have an evening setting on them now, which is that orange light. And so that allows more of that relaxation response. And of course, with alarm clocks and things like that as well, we want to neutralize as much light in our room as possible. And that starts to move us into our sleep habitat. So creating that environment that promotes good sleep. So you want the comfort um, of that room with nice bedding and pillows and a good temperature. So temperature is also something that the scientists cannot agree on around proper sleep habitat. 
The average that I hear the most is 65 degrees, but the range is from about 54 to 75. So again, you'll want to play around with that. Some people like it very cold. Other people like it very warm, but you don't want it too warm or too cold because both of those things will impact your quality of sleep. Shelly says that finds a notepad beside my bed to write things down. Very helpful. Yes, great idea, Shelly. That is very great. Again, because our mind will ruminate, put it over and over because we're fearful that we're going to forget it or we're trying to figure it out. But if we write it down, then we can leave it down there and pick it up again in the morning. Of course, that's easy to say. It takes practice and all of these things are about practice until it becomes natural for you. Blocking out distractions, so definitely looking at those alarm clocks. Alarm clocks, most of them now as well, do have the ability to minimize the lighting on them or turn to an orange light instead of that blue light. Diane is saying the other day someone talked about turning the alarm clock away from you so that you can't see the time. Absolutely. So all of these little tidbits, this is really great just to put in the chats to help each other out. So thank you to everyone that's putting some of those chat ideas in there. It's really great when you can use uh, and share your own knowledge as well because all the different, as many different tools as we have in our tool belt is going to be more helpful for us. Also then when we look at reserving our bed, so we refer to it as the three S's, sleep, sex, and sick. So those are three things. So not reading in bed, not watching movies in bed, not having a TV that you're watching, uh, not having a nap in bed, all those different things as well can really reserve the bed so that again, your body and your mind get into that, oh, okay, this is what is expected of me next and helps us to prepare. Leslie, do most people have cell phones in their bedrooms now that the landlines are a thing of the past? Yeah, Leslie, I'm sure. And also looking at people reading off their cell phone. George is the same as me. I actually use my cell phone as my alarm clock as well. Um, and so it is turning that off at night. And for myself, I put onto airplane mode and the alarm clock still stays on there. So that's what I have really, it's taken me about a year to figure that out instead of it flashing up or, or turning to it. And so we really have to find our own way of getting that sleep habitat for the environment, promoting good sleep. Cheryl has, I recently started using an app on my phone with sleep sounds. Yes, white noise, anything sort of that takes that external noise that our brain says, oh, okay, this is great. I love that noise that's just creating that relaxation response. All really great. Thank you so much for all those great suggestions and ideas in the chat. It really helps to feel like we're together, which I really love. I'm not just talking to myself. This is wonderful. So we have these three things, step one, step two, step three, looking at the sleep habits, sleep hygiene, and sleep habitat. So what I want you to think of again is what you're already doing well. Each and every one of us has some that we do well. Either we go to bed at the same time, which is really great. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. Also, what a, a new thing that, well, relatively new, is that you can put on your Fitbit or your iWatch or if you have a smart watch or on your phone that it's a, a chime that lets you know it's 45 minutes to bed or an hour to bed and that can start to be Pavlov's dog, right? Oh, the charm goes off. Oh, okay. Then the body starts to relax. Yeah, this is going to be good. There's an opportunity to rest and relax. So having the fan, yes, yeah, so those sort of white noises. This is so great. Um, Chris is saying you're so ready to use all these things. And my kids, I think it's so interesting that when uh, I ask people, and this may be in class, but also as we've been doing the webinars, what they do for their sleep hygiene, it's crickets, right? A lot of people don't recognize that. But what did you do as a kid? What do you do with your children? Right? We get them ready so that you can't just take a child from watching TV and say, okay, you're going to bed in five minutes. We as adults can't do that either, but somewhere along it as adults, we lose that element of routine, of practicing in order for our body to get used to how we want to sleep, when we want to sleep, where we're going to sleep. So the habits, the hygiene, the habitat. So as I was saying, definitely take these things 
and start with what you're already doing well. Put that down as part of your sleep routine. Also, we want to look at how we can increase that full daytime alertness. So we don't have the two o'clock slump where most people, you know, we have the coffee machine in our office. So we definitely see when that afternoon slump is because people come in one, two o'clock, and you can see that they're trying to get through the rest of the day. So again, not just that quantity of sleep, but the quality of sleep. So this is the one that we're really going to focus on next is that aspect of relaxation. And there's three different things that we're going to practice for our sleep hygiene this evening. And I really hope that there are things that you can guide into your own routine. So your calm place, that visualization that we're going to look at, tactical breathing. So I mentioned that what brings us from stress is, is that relaxation response is what we're trying to get from our stressful day to relaxing in the evening and that can be really helpful if we have a good breathing routine that we incorporate and then we're going to do a little bit of integrative restoration or irs yoga nidra and yoga nidra means yoga sleep so for anyone that does do yoga and you're doing shavasana at the end of your practice that's yoga sleep time and it's something that really helps us get into those delta brain waves which are really vital for us to have that quality of sleep. So we are going to the forest this evening for a visualization, but the forest may not be exactly where you love to be as your preparation for dreamland. But I do want you to think of a place that is very relaxing for you. And this is gonna be your sleepy place. And your sleepy place doesn't need to be anything that or any place that you've been before, it can be completely made up in your mind. And this is sort of like your own bedtime story. So as Krista was saying, we do so many of these things with our children and part of our bedtime routine often with children is to read them that night night story, right? They're crawling to bed, they're in their favorite jammies, they're all safe and secure and, and um, cocooned up. And then we read them a really nice story or a funny story or something. And we're all drawn to what those stories are. If you have more than one child, they probably have different tastes in what they like for their nighttime stories. And our visualization is the same. So tonight, even though we're going to the forest, you may have a place that you enjoy even more, you wanna go in your mind. And you want this to be the same every evening when you crawl into bed and you're practicing this as your bedtime routine. Think about, um, I, I've heard a lot of people now saying about doing gratitude as well. And this really is gratitude towards yourself, this visualization. You know, what went well today? What stories can you take with yourself and to move forward and to move on? And what can you do to give your mind and your body a break? So where is that place? And we want to add as many different elements, and this is from our IRS training, of senses into it. So for example, if I'm thinking of the forest, what would I see? I see trees, I see path, I see the sun coming through the, the leaves in all different rays. What do I hear? I hear the birds chirping, I may hear the leaves rustling. What do I feel? I may feel a gentle breeze on my skin. I may feel the sun touching my face. What do I smell around me, flowers, or maybe just inhaling that fresh air? So wherever your sleepy place is, we want to add all these elements of sensory perception as well. And when we're doing this, we're actually going to practice it all the way through. So for right now, I'm going to ask you to get into your comfortable sleep relaxation. I'm not sure if you can lay down where you are. Maybe you're already in bed. You're just going to go right to sleep after this. Depends on where you are across the country, I guess. So get as comfortable as possible. And if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes and you can replay that sleepy visualization on the back of your eyelids. So you can see your eyelids as a movie screen and creating your own sleepy place. Maybe it's in a meadow. 
Maybe it's on the beach, on a boat, at the cottage, traveling, doesn't matter where it is. I'm going to guide us through the forest. So if the forest isn't the place that you would prefer to be, then just go off your own merry way. And when we come to our body scan, I will bring you back. For those of you joining me in the forest, imagine that you're walking down a path into a lush forest. As you walk along the path, you completely take in the sights, sounds, smells, and feel of the forest that surrounds you. All around you are trees, grass, and fragrant flowers. You hear the soothing sounds of birds chirping and the wind as it gently blows through the treetops. You smell the rich dampness of the forest floor and the new growth of spring. Through gaps in the treetops, you see the sun high in a cloudless blue sky. The sun is dispersed through the canopy of the treetops and filters down onto the forest floor, creating intricate patterns of light and shadow. With each breath you take, with each step, you feel a deep sense of peace and calm. You soon come to a clearing and there are several flat rocks in the clearing surrounded by soft moss and a small stream runs amongst the rocks. You lie back on one of the rocks on the cushiony moss. You feel the warm sun and a gentle light breeze across your skin. The sparkling clear water rushes around you, making little whirlpools and eddies. And you can hear the stream as it runs amongst the rocks. You close your eyes here, listening to the trinkle of the water bathing in the warm sun, feeling light and free as though you are floating. You let yourself sink further and further into relaxation while continuing to be aware of the sights and sounds and smells of the forest that surrounds you. You allow yourself to let go of any concerns or worries and to feel completely at ease. Now allow yourself to sense the body breathing itself, the natural flow of sensation as the breath enters and leaves the body, chest and abdomen gently expanding and releasing, welcoming sensation throughout the body as breath flows in, as breath flows out, become aware of the body breathing itself naturally and rhythmically. Now begin counting your breaths backwards from seven to one like this. Inhaling, abdomen expanding, seven. Exhaling, abdomen releasing, seven. Inhaling, abdomen expanding, six. Exhaling, abdomen releasing, six. Continuing counting with your body's own natural breathing rhythm.
completely absorbed and counting down from seven to one as the body breathes itself. And if you arrive at one or lose count, just simply begin again from seven to one. Abdomen expanding, abdomen releasing, body breathing itself. Now returning to your body's own natural breathing rhythm, letting the counting fall away while remaining attentive to flows of sensation throughout the whole body. Become aware of flow of sensation throughout the whole body. As we begin to focus on sensation, Allow my words to become your words as we rotate attention throughout the whole body. Begin by allowing the thinking mind to rest, focusing only on sensations, sensations in your jaw, lips, teeth, Gum sensations in your mouth, floor of the mouth, ceiling of the mouth, inner walls of the mouth, left and right, tongue, back of the throat your entire jaw, mouth, and throat as sensation. Give up being involved with thinking, instead welcoming sensations just as they are. Sensations of the left ear, inside and out the complete architecture of the whole ear. Sensation of the right ear, inside, outside, the complete architecture of the whole right ear. Welcoming both ears at the same time as pure sensation. Sensation of the breath through the left nostril. Right nostril. Sensation of both nostrils. Left eye. Eyebrow. Temple cheekbone, the entire left eye as sensation, right eye, eyebrow, temple, cheekbone, the entire right eye as sensation, welcoming both eyes at the same time as radiant sensation. Without analyzing, simply sensing your way from your forehead, crown of your head, back of the head, neck, inner walls of the throat, sensations of the shoulders, upper arms, elbow, forearms, wrist, palm and fingers, 
both arms at the same time as pure sensation. Letting go of the thinking mind, thoughts drifting away like helium balloons sailing into the sky, focusing only on sensation of the upper chest and back, middle chest and back abdomen and lower back, the whole torso as pure sensation. Sensing the hips and thighs, knees, forelegs, calf, ankle, foot, and toes welcoming both legs at the same time as pure sensation, sensing the entire front of the body, back of the body, left side, right side, sensing the whole body inside and outside as pure sensation, allowing the thinking mind to rest, focusing only on sensation, sensation of the breath, inhaling and exhaling as we return to the middle of the forest, feeling the warmth of the sun on your face in a gentle breeze, body inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling as we count four, three, two, one. Hold the breath, four, three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Hold, four, three, two, one, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, allowing your normal breath to return. As you visualize yourself rising from the middle of the forest, returning back to the trail through the forest, walking out, leaving behind any remaining tension or worries. As you return to your own room, your own space, as we gently allow our body and mind to awaken from our visualization, our eye rest, and a few moments there of our tactical four count breathing. So you can either remain with your eyes closed and resting or just to follow up, just to let you know a little bit of what happened through our relaxation with our body breathing, triggering that relaxation response as our brain moves through those states and brain waves and into our delta state, which helps our mind sleep and gives our body that opportunity of rest and restore and healing. So I hope that you will incorporate either visualization or some of the IRS body scan or maybe that breathing into your sleep hygiene as well. And perhaps you'll even commit to it. So on the bottom of that counting sheep and better sleep strategies. So counting sheep doesn't always work. Counting does work if we can attach it with the breath as well. So they weren't too far off. It's more the counting of the breath than the counting of the sheep. So you may feel that you want to commit to practicing something over the next couple of weeks. You can also find those webinars again at capconnection.ca. So I invite you to go back there and these resources. So I was mentioning again, some of the clinical resources available to you 
through Canadian Forces Member Assistance Program, that 1-800 number, um, the Family Resource Line is on there as well, or if you have kids of a course that need help at home, that can also be helped through Canadian Forces Member Assistance Program, but the Kids Help Phone also is texting. I see George there. Praying is also a nice mind calming technique and can pray away some of the stressors. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for sharing that, George. So there's lots of resources available to you that we've used throughout the last hour together. I have added them to the reverse side of your handout that I'm giving you as well. So I hope that everyone really enjoyed themselves. Thank you much, so much for joining me tonight. And I hope that you can use some of these practices as you head off into a silent slumber. So thanks once again. It was so great to have you with me this evening. And I hope you really enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, Shauna. Thanks, George and Roxanne as well. And Shelly, thanks so much for joining me. Have a wonderful evening, everyone, and take good care. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Krista. So great to see you here as well tonight, Leslie. That's wonderful. Enjoy the rest of your evening.